Hey guys, Artosis here. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Stormgate and the Infernal Faction. Uh, the Infernal is the second faction revealed in Stormgate. They seem to most resemble and play like Zerg from StarCraft II. Their worker unit, the Imp, has to sacrifice itself to make buildings. They also get an advantage from a dark cloudish thing that spreads around their shrines, uh, which is the main production building, uh, and shroud stones. Uh, this is called shroud. Uh, it is important to note that standing on shroud generates white health for infernal units, which acts similarly to Protoss plasma shields. Uh, when infernal units are off the shroud, though, they will lose this white health over time. Uh, the Infernal also have a very interesting, somewhat Zerg-like production. They make something kind of like charges of units that fill up over time on a given structure. When the charge is full, uh, if you choose to make the unit, it will be created instantly. Uh, you can bank up to three of these charges at the time I'm making this video, which allows you to make decisions on spending in a more delayed manner kind of similar to how Zerg functions with Larva. Now that you've got some of the basics down, let's talk about the actual units. So first up, the Iron Vault and the Conclave are both tier one structures, but we're gonna talk about the Iron Vault uh, since that has kind of like the most basic unit, a unit that only costs Luminite. Uh, and that unit is the Brute. When trying to figure out how to relate this incredibly original unit to another unit from RTS. The closest I could come up with is a reverse Zerg Archon. <laughs> so basically the Brute is a pretty big, strong, kind of medium speed melee unit. Uh, and it has an ability which allows the Brute to split into two smaller units called Fiends. Uh, the split can't be undone, uh, and it's not automated either. It's something that you are going to have to micro each and every time uh, to get done before the Brute ends up dying. So kind of the opposite of an Archon there where you might take a couple of Templars and make a powerful unit. This is a powerful unit you're going to split into smaller units. Uh, and this actually brings us to one of the most important units for the Infernals, which is what the Brute splits into, the Fiends. Uh, fiends cannot be directly created out of any structure. Uh, you can only get them through splitting brutes or infest abilities, which I'll talk about a little bit later. The fiends are very much like zerglings from StarCraft II. They're low health, high damage, easy to swarm, and very fast. One of the most interesting things about fiends is that they naturally lose health over time. Uh, while this may sound like a huge disadvantage, it opens up some really interesting plays, such as keeping them on Shroud to have that white health regeneration keep them alive, or to take down a health camp to heal them up as well. Next from the Iron Vault is the Magmadon. The Magmadon is pretty expensive and quite a bit higher in tech than the Brute. It's also a melee unit, but it has a special ability it starts with called Crushing Charge. This allows the Magmadon to slide into battle, stunning enemies, kind of like the Elite Torn Chieftain from <laughs> Heroes of the Storm. Uh, Crushing Charge can also knock down trees uh, to help open up paths that would otherwise be closed off. The Magmadon also has a researchable upgrade known as the Flame Coil Lariat, used for helping to deal with flying units by bringing them to the ground. Now let's talk about the Conclave and its Thrall production. The Conclave, again, can also be built at the beginning of the game, but it doesn't have any units that are only Luminite. So this is something that you generally will see as kind of a later tech than the Iron Vault. The main unit the Conclave produces is the Gaunt. The Gaunt is an inexpensive range unit that hits both air and ground, and it has a bouncing attack. Uh, the Gaunt's offensive abilities kind of feel like they pale in comparison to like a Marine, a Roach, or even an Exo from the Vanguard. Uh, but that's before they get their Hemoglave Infusion upgrade. This upgrade is somewhat similar to Stim, dealing damage to the Gaunt, but increasing its damage. And causing damaged units, that's units that the Gaunt is hitting, to become infested for a short period of time. 
Now, when a unit is infested, if it dies, it will spawn a fiend, uh, and that fiend will join your army. So obviously, as this sounds, uh, it can help turn the tides or snowball an already won fight if your opponent doesn't retreat when it's appropriate to. The second unit created at the Conclave is called the Weaver. The Weaver is a heavy, slow thrall unit with an amazing ability called Lash. Lash is basically abduct from the StarCraft II's Viper. It grabs a unit and drags it into the Weaver. Now, I'm normally an RTS player who doesn't really care about graphics or style at all, but the Weaver is the creepiest unit I've ever seen, and I absolutely love the way that it shambles around. I just kind of have to add that in there. As soon as I saw the Weaver, I mean, you get this very different feel from it. A very, very cool unit to see. Next, let's talk about flying units made from the Twilight Spire. The Spriggan is somewhat similar to the StarCraft II Mutalisk. It's a flying unit which can attack air and ground, which seems perfect for hit and run harassment or for punishing an army with insufficient anti-air. It does cost a lot of Therium though, so massing them can be a bit difficult. Lastly from the Twilight Spire is the Doombringer. The Doombringer is the flying transport unit for the Infernal, but with a bit of a twist compared to conventional air transports. To load or unload the Doombringer, you have to land it. This obviously makes the Doombringer a lot more vulnerable than other transports, but it generates shroud around it when landed. The Shroud makes all the Infernal units generate white health and provides an advantage in battle because of this. It's kind of similar to the StarCraft II Overlords as they can go into battle and drop creep to give that speed boost to Zerg units. Uh, but I do think this will maybe see a bit more play than that Overlord creep dropping that we ever saw in StarCraft II. You know, I mentioned before the Imp uh, is very much like a drone, sacrificing itself to make a building. But later on, you can upgrade Flame On. When Flame On is activated, the Imp becomes something pretty close to a StarCraft II Baneling. They can sacrifice themselves while dealing splash damage to the enemy. Shadow Flyers are the other unit made by the Shrine, and they're really similar to Scourge from StarCraft I. They sacrifice themselves into other air units for massive damage and don't have any sort of ground attack or anything like that. You can also get an upgrade called Bright Blood and that'll make them more effective at killing those air units off. There is one last thing that kind of has one last unit in it that we do need to go over here as well. Uh, and that would be the Infernal Shroud Stone. The Shroud Stone is the static defense building uh, for the faction. It also collects something called Animus. Animus is kind of like spell energy, which is collected as units die around your units. So this could be your units or your opponent's units. And there's a bonus if they die on Shroud. So the spells for the Shroud Stone are Bring Darkness. This can be cast anywhere on the map, causing an area of effect infest, which will create fiends. It also has Blood Moon. This will uh, give a large boost to white health regeneration rate. Uh, for a short time. There's a Nightfall Infestation. This will create another Shroud Stone, but it has to be pretty close to the Shroud Stone that casts it. And last but certainly not least, Summon Flayed Dragon. <laughs> this is a really expensive spell that makes a gigantic flying dragon which can infest enemy units basically at your whim. It's an incredibly strong unit, uh, but pretty hard to get to. So I hope that this has helped you a little bit trying to draw some parallels between the Stormgate Infernal units and uh, other units in RTS games that you may have watched or played in the past. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed and that it helped you in some ways. And guys, thank you very much for watching and good luck in Stormgate.